Well, it's a blustery Tuesday in the Valley, and we've been discussing the merits of Billy Joel. Uh, and our, our verdict is that he was kind of cool, but kind of dorky, too. I enjoy his music, and um, we're just going to leave it at that. It was a long weekend. You're not going to mention Christy Brinkley? Uh, well, what's there to mention? She's That's beautiful. True, yeah. She's an amazing She's model in the 80s. May she walk in at any moment and be a guest on the show? Yeah, I doubt it. Doubtful. That. But it's all right. We How come it's Tuesday and not Monday? Well, because we had a long weekend. We were Memorial Day, and it was just a long weekend. And so with th the only things that are going to be happening are happening Friday. Exactly. So essentially, one day is not going to kill it. So anyway, okay, well, let's get to the stuff. What do we got? Get to Friday, apparently. So, okay, now, we're going to talk a little bit of softball. Sam Nino made it. That's great. The only team in Valley history to go to state so far. It's it, amazing. It really is cool. Uh, okay, so you have a game Friday, and say you don't get rained out. Why weren't the umpires there yet? That's incredible. The umpires didn't show up. I mean, at, at this round of the playoffs, you'd have to... And, it's, of course, it's, it's explainable how it happened. They told them this and they thought this. But you're just that's not supposed to be. Not at that all. level? Not at all. And there's been a, lot, there's been a lot of complaints with Tasso. And then you, they have them do something like this for a regional final. Uh, it's incredible. Now, you expect that if a scrimmage or a tournament, oh, well, so-and-so didn't show up. But come on, guys. I mean, this is the Elite Eight here we're talking about. But nonetheless, San Bernardino was able to get past. There you go. Man, they just whooped San Antonio. How do you like them apples? That's great. It was. It was. And now they're going to Austin. And, th and they better be careful because the team they have is not that great. I promise you. It's on a roll. It's like the NC State of 1983. 13 losses. Yeah. But that team can play. A four seed is in the final four. That's nuts. That's nice, though. I mean, it makes San Benito the favorite. Not only has the Valley gone all the way to state, but we're the favorite in the semifinals. Amazing. That's good. That's good. And so what do you think they're going to do? Yeah, I think they're, they're going to win. Uh, I was under the impression, I saw North batter around Amber Hasso in like 10 minutes and she was out. Apparently that's the only time she pitched poorly almost all year. She's on a roll. That little gal, did you read the quotes in the San Antonio paper? We got beat by a four foot pitcher. Well, that's right, you did. That's la verdad, you did. She's also an amazing leader and she'll do something on the bases and she'll make something happen. She really is something else, man. She's, she's an amazing player. That's nice. And the kid too, she's not, I think she might be a junior at, at most, maybe a side, you know, she's amazing. Now, will the rest of those kids get up on the stage and go, it happens to any team at a certain level? Well, they, I'm not I saying mean, it's going to. I really don't see that happening. You've already got to that level this last round Maybe where, so. where you were going to be. If you, if you were going to freeze, it would have happened this last Against O'Connor. It would have happened against O'Connor, the team that, you know, had been to state and this and that. Uh, the team, the Smithson Valley team they beat has won three state titles. And was defending champ, I believe it or not, was Deer Four. Park. No, no, they were defending champ. The 4A, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Deer Park and the other semifinal is the defending 5A state champ. Uh, they play humble Kingwood, both of them teams have records commensurate with San Benito. But in the Final Four, this is another one, San Benito now has the best record of all teams in the league. Now you can say it's because of the level of competition they play, but I'd say they played a pretty tough schedule. They played a really they tough schedule. Hannah, yeah, they, they had Hannah, they had South, they played a North, they played Edinburgh High, so I mean they played the best of the Valley. They played they played Rose. That's right, 32-2. I mean, yeah. If they win the state championship, we're going over to San Benito. I guarantee you. I'm thinking, should we go out there on Friday and go to that game? God, I can miss that. Road right? trip. What's, what's one more? Yeah. Uh, Amazing. I hope they yeah. do it. I think if they don't get complacent, this team they're playing is a four seed. But as I said, it's got the magic. It's got the role right now. And it thinks that it's not a 13-loss team. It thinks it's going to win state. There you go. You better be careful. Okay, so that's softball. Let's get back to football. We were supposed to watch no another spring game, but unfortunately Mother Nature didn't let it happen. We sat out there in the parking lot. Windows open up our trucks, looking at lightning, going, oh no. I really wanted to see Memorial play. I, so did I. I was really in the But you did I, see Mac High? I did see Mac High, and uh, Rick Rodriguez is going to have a great year next year. 28? Yeah. He's a good back. He's going to have a really good great year. What the coach is most worried about him with right now, it's a great thing. Yards after carry. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's worried because he might get injured. Well, you get hit more, you have yeah. a chance to get hurt more. And he's the type of person, his head's going down first. Right, he's, yeah, yeah. He's I mean, old, he's got cuts, but he's, he's, he's an old school back, yeah. So the thing, here's the deal. They're going to run the ball more because they've got that big offensive line. I think it's a good idea for them to get back to more of an old school approach. Now they have to come up with another back, too, to have eight or ten carries a game. And they will. I mean, there's talent with it. No, they will. And it'll, they'll be all right because, I mean, Hover can throw. Yes, he can, man. I mean, he threw it last year. So, I mean, Hover's going to have about 2,500 this year. He's going to have a heck of a season. I, I, he'll probably run for about seven or eight hundred. The coach is telling me that they want to be able to be averaging about 80 plays on offense. Wow. So are they going to run any sort of quick stuff? Uh, he didn't really get into too much no detail, huddles, but like, it's going to be no huddle. It's going to be quick. Uh, you know what I liked about that practice? Uh, 
he would go after each play and new Mac high coach. Yeah, the new Mac high coach. Uh, he would go after each play and tap every single lineman on the head. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. You could tell he was a line coach. Right, exactly. <laughs> I was about to say he's a hog, man. Yeah, you could tell he was a line coach. He was really enjoying watching that line play. That line's big. Yeah, they're real big. Well, Memorial's got a big line. Oh. Edinburgh North has a reasonably big line, but not nearly as big as McCallum. Yeah. McCallum, but for years, has had one of the biggest lines in the, in the Valley, if not the biggest. So, Well, we'll see how they do. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, it's it's going to be a new era at yeah. Mack High Football. It really right is. across the street here. Man, that was like two decades, man. I went to a Vela Spring game Saturday. I had seen North on, on a Thursday. Uh, North looks pretty good. I have to say, I keep saying it. Uh, they're, they're a solid team. Vela looks a lot better. They, it's intriguing. They could be anywhere from one or two wins to four or five, maybe. I don't know. I mean, they, they've got some athletes, some big kids, man. If everything comes together, Tristan Gomez, the quarterback, was throwing very well in the spring game. And that little backup they have, Navarro, he doesn't look like much physically, but he's also decent. The thing I want to mention about that uh, scrimmage is the turf, the new turf at Cat Stadium. Uh, the last turf we had only lasted four or five years, and it probably will go down in history in an ignominious way. Okay, and that's it. But this turf is neat, man. It, it, they, they took the time, they got it down. It's a little longer turf than mm -hmm. you're used to. See, back when, in the day, in the 70s, we played an artificial turf that I swear it was like this table, but painted green. It was horrible. You know, we wore basketball shoes in practice. This turf is way softer. Here's the, here's the irony about that. You don't get as true a cut on this turf as you do on the harder turf, mm. okay? And you, as, the, as the years go by and you, know, you play on it three or four times a week, it will get a little bit faster, but it's not a fast turf right now. What size of cleat are they using on there? That I don't know, but you, what, the thing is, it's hard to find a cleat for this turf because it's, it's not hard and it's, it's not baby soft. I like playing on a Kleenex. But, you know, it, there's some give to it. And, and the reason that's the case is because they're trying to avoid knee injury. So you make the turf softer so that when people go down, they don't get hurt. They don't wrench knees and ankles as much. Because sometimes on that old turf, you would cut and your whole body would go over and your ankle would go bloop. And that's no good. Or a knee. Yeah, there goes your ACL. Right, exactly. So, you know, I like it. Uh, I think that it's a little long on the sidelines. But that will get tamped down as they play a whole season on it. But it's exciting. Uh, it's a good-looking turf. Every five yards. Dark green, light green, like LSU. It looked like LSU, so I was excited about that. Sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else have we got on tap, man? There's not that much going on. There's not that much going on, but the one thing I wanted to actually kind of talk about was uh, this summer league business. Because we are going to be starting. In fact, there are already summer leagues being played in some places. The Edinburgh Summer League, long the, one of the uh, granddaddies of them all, will start in June. A great way to scout and a great way to, uh, you know, kind of familiarize yourself with who's going to be on what team. Although you can be fooled in the summer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll see a team... Uh, and it won't have its full complement. So if you don't know the, the players that aren't there, you'll think, golly, they're bad this year. So <clears throat> you go to the summer league to see if, uh, what people have done skill level wise. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that should be exciting to grow. Yeah, man. I mean, and they're going to be playing seven on seven, I think, in McAllen. Uh, that's supposed to start soon. There's no break anymore. There is no break anymore between the season and uh, uh, the summer and all the time off, which is good in one hand, sense and bad in another. I've always thought that it had uh, kind of a, a double-edged sword because on one hand, kids get more skill practice, they get more time playing together. On the other hand, you run the risk of injury and burnout. Sure. I mean, goodness, sure. man, they got to have time to lay around. I don't mean to play video games. I just mean take a little rest psychically and physically from sport. You do, yeah, you really need a break. No matter what you, whatever you're competing in, take a month off. Mm -hmm. maybe. You know what I mean? And you'll be all right, I think. In football, you know, there's a superstition against taking much time off. So what they want, you know, your, your goals post-spring are to get in the weight room and to run and to stay out of trouble so that by the time you get to August, you know. That's the main thing, staying out of trouble. Yeah, that's true. That's very difficult for some of these kids. Man. Well, shoot, man. I mean, kids miss their fun. Sports, you want to have fun, and today's fun. Probably a little more uh, prohibitive than in the past. There's no simple throwing rocks at uh, stop signs anymore. Anyhow, here's what I think. The, the, the bottom line is, can you keep the kids interested in getting better as an athlete over the entire summer? And in football, since there ain't no summer football, you know, you can lose kids some, for weeks at a time. This guy got a job. This guy went to Mexico. This guy didn't want to live. So you come back in August and you look at some of your kids and you're like, you didn't live. And you know they didn't live. When they walk into the weight room to get their stuff the first day, you can tell who lifted and who didn't. I'll tell you guys, lifting is Ronnie Benavides for, for Bela the safety. I can't trump it enough how big he's gotten. Michael Arguez. Um, from Vail, he's going to be a sophomore, 6'2", about 195, he, and he caught a touchdown in the spring game. I think he has the upside that's better than any athlete in the city right now in football. Yes. Big kid, he can play receiver, he can play defensive back. I could even see him at an outside linebacker or a defensive end if he gets to be about 225. He's a phenomenal athlete, and I can't wait to see how he develops this year. It's going to be an exciting season for sure. I think it will. Now, uh, we're less than 100 days away. Yes, I know it. 
uh, what we got to do now is figure out, okay, what do you get out of spring? Well, you have a depth chart. And you, know, you know what a depth chart is. Sure, right? You yeah. go up to the wall and you look at left halfback and Gonzalez, Jackson, and then your name. It's like, hey, wait a minute, why am I third? <laughs> Whatever. So that's a big deal. Right now, the depth chart is set after spring. Who's going to lift? Who's going to be there? Who's it's going to change? It is going to change. change. Who's going to come back to the program uh, midsummer? And, you know, in other words, yeah. uh, so the coaches, they have it set in their minds and they know that there's going to be three or four or five things that happen differently. So and so didn't come back to school. Or so and so didn't do this, or so and so did do this. I mean, so it's not as if the fall lineups are set now. But but they got a good read. I mean, at 18 yeah. days, you got a good look at who's going to work hard. Yeah. Now, who's going to work hard in the summer is the key. I'm telling you, if you come back and you see that your guys are 10 or 15 pounds heavier, you know that you're going to have a good year. And that's what all those coaches, you know, they really stress that. Hey, the season starts now. Yeah, because you, you have to you have to be in the weight room. You can't let that slip up because the other team's already practicing. Well, yeah, and so what happens is if you lift and if you eat right for the most part, then your man growth will come to you. But if you eat a bunch of junk and if you don't lift, if you just mess around, you're not going to grow like you would. You won't be as physically vital as you would have been had you put in the time. It's hard to convince the 18-year-old or 16-year-old mind that what he's doing now will have an impact later on, but you just hope that you get some sort of effort during the summer because if not, I've seen teams wither on the vine. They look great in the spring and all of a sudden nobody lifted and they're weak as kittens in the fall. It's no good. You'll get beat, You'll get beat in the fourth quarter. Well, that's, 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 you don't want that. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's tied, you got everybody looking, mm -hmm. and then... When you're tied, it's not talent as much as it is conditioning and will. Mm -hmm. In other words, who's still playing hard and who's not? You know exactly. what I mean? You'll, 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 you'll crap out and, and you'll die on the vine if you don't have uh, strength and endurance. So, and that's the part that we can't see happening on a daily basis, but we can tell the first scrimmage who was going to be overpowered and who's not. Yep. It's exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm fired up. It's only three months away. Well, so the rest of the summer, I will have to tell you this, though. The bad news is that the Roadrunners began the series up in Fort Worth, losing four in a row. In fact, they're hitting 123 as a team right now. They have hit nothing. They have 13 hits in four games. The pitching's been decent. Okay, so that's a good sign, because eventually in that league, yeah. you're going to win if you have two or three good pitchers. Their whole opener's coming up, right? That's Saturday. right. Saturday, my birthday, my 80th birthday. <laughs> I'll be out at the baseball game. Uh, they play four in San Angelo now against the uh, team out there, the Colts. It's always pretty good. Yeah. Look, they just got to get on off the off the skit, the ziggy, man. They got to get a win. They can't be getting swept two in a row and then come back 0 and 8. That's just not what you want to do to get people in the stands. Sure. Uh, well, we'll see what happens, and maybe come back next week and we'll have a good story about them. I hope so. You, uh, you know, the other thing that's going on is I believe the softball and baseball All Star games are in two or three weeks out in La Jolla. Of course, I mean, with San Benito still playing, we're not thinking about All Star games. We're thinking about a team State in State, State. Yeah, man. like two teams in soccer. Like three state champions in track, like this and that. Who who went in golf? A Sherry Lane kid. The, yeah, or so tennis. Penny, yeah, it was, it was Penny. yeah. So Penny. Yeah. So let's face it, man. When they hear the valley now, they're not going. Yeah, those guys. We're doing pretty they're good. Here I'm so I'm so happy for the kids yeah, this year. They have been born. Yeah, here to compete, man. That's that's what it's about, man. You're just not hearing that valley week too much. No, you no. still hear it, but. I don't want to hear nothing from them about softball now. We whooped their best teams, man. Ha ha ha. That's great. Or as. Uh, the guy used to say in The Simpsons, ha ha. That's good. I had to work a ha ha in him. Nelson. What else? Yeah, Nelson, Nelson Muntz was yeah. the guy's name. <laughs> oh boy. And if you don't understand us, then just call our psychiatric wing and give us a card because we really yeah. need it. All right, good. All right, so, what yeah. else? I think that's it, man. The Spurs going to win the NBA championship? <sighs> They're the smartest team left. For, for my father's sake, I'm going to say yes. The big Spurs fans. So. Yeah. Well, happy, I, I'll be happy. I enjoy the Spurs. Uh, the Heat are a dominant team, but the Spurs are the only unit I see out there that is disciplined enough and clutch enough to pull it off. They'll probably get overpowered physically uh, in the end, but if they start out well, hit a ton of threes and, and, and take that advantage, that add, then they can do it. I'm not saying they will, but they're not going to lay down. Not my necessarily play the Heat either. Yeah. Pacers might have something to say. The Pacers blew it, dude. If they'd have won game one, they would have had a vastly different scenario confronting them. I know they can kick themselves right now. Uh, they're going to have to come back. I'll yeah. tell you what, Roy Hibbert is tough. Yeah. A big old boy. And he's kind of cocky, too, yeah, man. He's like talking uh, to people. Yeah, it's like, exciting. And it's a good thing. They're, you know, this, that team's not scared of the heat, and that's what's good. You know what wins championships? Haslam going eight for nine. Okay? In, in a playoff game, one person you didn't count on has got to be nuts. And if he is, you're going to probably win. Because the stars will be pretty good. But if Haslam goes eight for nine for 17, he was hitting jumpers like there's no I could believe it. Yeah. We'll see what happens. June 6th, start of the finals. Uh, June 6th, also what? The anniversary of the invasion of Normandy for you history fans. Anything else we need to cover? I think we've got it all for right now. It's kind of a short week with some sports and 
Hopefully it doesn't get any shorter, but we'll figure something out. If it gets any shorter, we'll start counting backwards. We maybe we'll, have we'll, something talk, maybe we'll come and talk politics. I think we can talk politics, yes. How, <laughs> how was Obama's week, man? Yes, we'll be like uh, the weekly standard or something. All right, so Talking Sports is out for Tuesday. See you back Monday, and root for those Lady Greyhounds. <laughs>